Welcome back to Justice. The war on police continues. Just this past week, a Dunkin' Donuts employee in Connecticut said, quote, we don't serve cops here. While a Dunkin' Donuts in Rhode Island is also apologizing after an employee wrote Black Lives Matter on a police officer's coffee cup. And that's just the latest in the string of anti-cop incidents and attacks across the U.S. With me now, my friend, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark. All right, Sheriff, should these Dunkin' Donuts employees be fired? Uh, without a doubt. You know, look, this is symbolic of uh, the lack of respect for authority that has gone on with police long before this war on police started. Uh, and I'm tired of these corporations, these companies coming out and thinking a simple apology will do. Apologies are for funerals. They don't work for business. They have a brand to protect. If they want to send a message to the rest of their employees about how important it is to treat customers with respect when cops come in there, they're a customer, then they ought to fire these individuals, but I'll leave that to them. But you know what's amazing? If they said, we don't serve Muslims here, they not only would fire the guy, they'd shut the place down. And when you think about it, it is financially a benefit to them to make sure that they are friendly with cops. I mean, just think about it. But it's almost as though you guys don't have the lobby that you need because there are some organizations that have a lobby. You say this much and you're gone. Right. It happened to uh, the pizza maker in Indiana and the bakery in uh, Oregon, I think it was, where it destroyed yeah. their business. And they didn't do nearly what uh, anything close to what's happening here. So, yeah, this seems to be a different standard. But I think the police are fighting back. Look, we can go anywhere and get coffee. Most businesses judge. Fortunately, most businesses welcome yeah. a uniform officer coming in because it's a deterrent. Uh, to hold up men, hold up men, case a business before they go in. They see a squad stopping in periodically. They're going to go somewhere else. It uh, also prevents unruly customers. When mm -hmm. people know, hey, the cops stop in there for, you know, food or whatever, uh, they have a tendency to behave in, in a more acceptable fashion. So fortunately, the businesses are on our side. This is a black eye for Dunkin' Donuts, but yeah. as I said the other I'm day, disappointed. You know, I think Krispy Kreme makes better donuts anyway. <laughs> I'll eat any donuts. Anyway, uh, look, uh, were you surprised at the backlash against President Obama uh, when he admitted uh, that he wanted to politicize the shootings in Roseburg, Oregon? What, what do you think of the families and the, and the people you know, who are protesting saying, we don't want you here? Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, you know, he never misses an opportunity to politicize something. Anytime there's a tragedy that happens in the United States, the first thing he does is goes into his political bag of tricks to see what he can accomplish on his agenda. And, and I think that that's sad that he exploits these people. And they saw right through it. That's yeah. why I said I'm glad they did it. You know, there's a certain amount of respect for the president of the United States. But when he uh, uh, takes advantage and, and uses them uh, to achieve a political agenda, I'm glad to see that they uh, that they slap back. This is a do as I say, not as I do president. And he speaks as he's surrounded by this protective bubble, which he should have with the armed secret service. If he wants to disarm people, he should start with his security staff. <laughs> you know, and, and finally, the president now says he wants to expand background checks uh, of gun purchasers and that he would even use an executive order to do it. Now, you and I both know that it's about the mental health of the shooter. That's the kind of information we can't get. So what kind of a background check is he going to do if, by the way, not all agencies provide rap sheets uh, to the federal agencies? Well, look how the FBI missed the, uh, uh, the uh, Charleston church shooter. Uh, they, they potentially, at least that day, could have stopped uh, that sale at a firearm. Look, nothing is absolute in the world, and it's not a perfect world, so I'm not going to come down too hard on the FBI about that. But getting back to the president, uh, this isn't about uh, tightening up um, who can and who cannot get a gun for the president of the United States, Barack Obama. This is about gun confiscation. It's not about, uh, it isn't even about gun control. It's about gun confiscation. And for the president, it's about breaking the back of the strong gun lobby in the United States, the, uh, the National Rifle Association, the gun owners of America, who protect that Second Amendment on a 24-7 basis. They know they have to weaken them in order to get to Congress to start twisting some arms in Congress to put in uh, a tighter uh, gun uh, restrictions, which only hurt law-abiding people. What we need in, the, right. in, the, in this country right now, we need 
well-armed, well-intentioned, law-abiding people. That will serve as a deterrent and stop and quickly stop these situations when they begin. Uh, Sheriff David Clark, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Judge, it's always my pleasure. All right.